just hearing you talk before about the price will bring a lot of sense of calm to people panicking um, about the price. The cryptocurrency crashing again right now as China calls for tighter regulation around mining. And, you know, Warren Buffett um, famously says over and over again, you know, that he loves down markets. I've, I've been buying stocks ever since I was 11 years old. So uh, when stocks go down, it's good news. Just like when hamburgers go down, it's good news <laughs> or Coca-Cola goes down. And you had forecasted that a, a few years back that we would see this wave. Um, but what, you know, what's interesting about the countries that are adopting, you're saying they're led by young, younger entrepreneurial people. I mean, would you, who, who, who do you think we could see next in terms of those countries? I mean, they all seem to be centralized in the same area. Is right. that not it's no, it's no mistake. After the Monroe Doctrine and the, the U.S. turning the southern states, the Latin America and right. Central America, into a slave labor market and cheap uh, commodities uh, using the dollar, read John Perkins' book, Confessions of an Economic Hitman. Washington, D.C., the CIA would send guys down there and load them up with debt. And if you don't pay the debt, we'll throw you out of an airplane. That's been America's foreign policy in the region for decades. Now these countries are saying, hey, you know what? I think we'll opt out. Thank you very much, but we don't need you because now we have Bitcoin, as I predicted and a few others predicted. The, the whole question was never, when will governments ban Bitcoin? The whole question is, which governments will start to adopt Bitcoin and you get into this hash war? You get into competitive uh, government acquisition mode. Like we need as much Bitcoin as possible. You see the, the New York, they're having a mayoral race right now. The guy who's leading the race said, oh, to heck with Miami, because Miami has declared itself a, the Bitcoin capital of America under its mayor. It's saying we're going to be the Bitcoin capital of America. New York City is going to be the Bitcoin capital of America, according to the mayoral candidate. He just came out with that this week. Right. So that's what I've been saying is going to happen. There's going to be competition to get the most Bitcoin, mine Bitcoin and get the most businesses of Bitcoin businesses. That's what we're going to see happening. It's called game theory. It's baked into the protocol since day one. And now it's playing out on the sovereign level, as we predicted for many years. So there's not going to be any banning of Bitcoin. There's going to be those countries that are smart enough to get in now and uh, reap the benefits. And then those countries that'll wait and be, um, you know, suffering. Yeah. It will be really interesting to see who will be added uh, next to the list. Well, so clearly in the region, uh, uh, as I said, Paraguay just came out today and said we're joining. Uh, right. my, my understanding is that Guatemala is ready to go. So uh, it's when you- But gonna... I mean like a European country, if someone like a country in Europe were to come out and say it, you know, that would be huge. Right. What? You know, they can't afford not to. That's the way game theory works. If, if these countries start to develop sound currency and sound currency policies and you know, El Salvador's uh, GDP is going to triple, property prices are up, people are moving there. And um, this has all happened very quickly. So if you have a country and your GDP is suffering and your fiat money is deteriorating, uh, you're, you're going to uh, be tempted into the Bitcoin uh, standard. To, to take advantage of that. Which country in Europe? I thought that, uh, you know, Iran would be a, a candidate to mm -hmm. go Bitcoin. They already mm -hmm. have so like four and a half percent of the hash rate right now, from what I understand. Uh, obviously, Russia, they totally got out of dollars. They sold, they dumped their last dollars out of their reserves. They have no more dollars. So they are free to do something smart, like do what Paraguay, uh, what El Salvador just did, go to a Bitcoin standard. Uh, India is also possibly, uh, you know, they go vacillating back and forth. So India, Russia uh, are two prime candidates. And uh, in, in Europe, because of the dominance of the ECB, and when I talked to you in January, I said the ECB was the most corrupt central bank in the world. Christine Lagarde is an absolute disaster. And I predicted that would be the first major central bank to go under. And I still think that that's true. The European Central Bank is is going to go under and then these countries are going to be fending for themselves and then you'll have them uh, when they get uh, split off they'll the, some of them will break off and say hey we're going to go to a bitcoin standard but right now they're still under the influence of the european central bank which is an atrocious absolutely ungodly institution that's causing untold harm and damage all over the eu uh, under christine lagarde and uh, so they that that's the problem that they have right now uh, good stuff, Max. I think um, just hearing you talk before about the price will bring a lot of sense of calm 
to people panicking um, about the price, but it's a good reminder that this is what Bitcoin does. It's just the question of how long, you know, I've had experts coming on saying this is going to be, you know, winter has come for Bitcoin and this could take months, maybe years to no, shake it's off. It's not going to take years. Look, I mean, you know, Warren Buffett um, famously says over and over again, you know, that he loves down markets. You know, he's done his research. He knows what the values are. And he loves it when markets are down. He loves it when markets crash because he can buy what he wants on sale. So, you know, it's very strange in the, in the investment business. You know, Peter Lynch talks about this in his books. And, you know, as many that typically um, people who buy stocks, uh, they, they don't seem to understand that if the price is cheaper, you're getting good value uh, for something. But they, they understand it if they went to the... To, to their local grocery store or their hardware store and they saw hammers on sale, you know, 50% off, they'd be like, wow, I got the same hammer for 50% off, I'm buying it. Well, here you got Bitcoin, which is on sale right now. It's the greatest monetary network in the, in the world. You know, the, the adoption of Bitcoin right now at 150 million users or so is about where the internet was in 1997. Now I was mm -hmm. on doing it.com in the 90s. In 1997 is right when Netscape went public and you had the whole explosion uh, of the internet as we know it today. It, it hinged really on that key year, 1997. So I think in 2021, it's similar to 1997 for Bitcoin. So Bitcoin will be, uh, this is the year where it suddenly goes that hockey stick move and you go from 150 million users to two or three billion users in a pretty compressed amount of time. In El Salvador, the number one finance app is Lightning Strike from Zap, from uh, Jack Mahler's company. And it's the number one app in the entire country. He's signing on 20,000 users a day in El Salvador to be on Lightning Network, which is Bitcoin, essentially. That means that within a year, the entire country will be on Bitcoin within a year. And then that's spreading to Guatemala and it's spreading to Paraguay. It's spreading all over the region to 100 million people into Mexico. Right. So that's so why would you not want to own that? If you if you had a chance to buy the internet in 1997, when only 150 million people were using it, and somebody said, "Hey, you know, for for uh, uh, thirty-five thousand dollars, you know, uh, uh, an, an option here, a, a share, uh, you can own a piece of what will become the dominant communications network of the globe," would you would you pass up on that deal? No. Same thing with Bitcoin. Why would you not own it at this price? Because the the five hundred thousand, six hundred thousand dollar price is baked into the cake at this point. There, there's 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 virtually no bear case. No matter what Frank Juster says, there is no bear case. You know, I listened to the debate. None of those points made up, but he's not the only one. No, <laughs> none of the bears, none of those points that have held up. They're just recycling the same old fud. Fear, uncertainty, and doubt over and over and over again. They can't even come up with anything new. Well, you know, a lot of the gold bugs this week were coming out say, saying, hey, hey, Bitcoiners, we told you so. You want to park your wealth in this? Look at the kind of correction you'd have to stomach. Well, again, so, it's a trade off. Do you want guaranteed increase in purchasing power with a little volatility? Or do you want to be in paper money where it's guaranteed loss of purchasing power? And I, again, I use the word guaranteed or with gold which no, well, it is just gold, going sideways. Gold is a no, captive the, the, market. You don't get good price signals in gold. It's but, not going but, anywhere. 